really did feel like a surreal dream come true. Uh, but to be given a second chance at anything in life, I think is a very rare and precious gift, and something to be treasured. So that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. Uh, and I'm going to try to do that right off the bat in this introduction. Now, at last year's Harvey Awards, there was an introduction I gave that didn't quite go exactly as I had planned it. Uh, now, you may be thinking I'm referring to my introduction of Mark Wade, which I bungled uh, the appropriate way to consume a particular type of Baltimore seafood. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not talking about that. You know, that, that didn't go as I had planned, it's true. But I'm not embarrassed about that one because, you know, it was funny. And the truth was, it was an honest mistake. No, what I'm embarrassed about was something I did that I felt was neither honest nor truthful, but was really uh, insensitive and cowardly. And thankfully, it's something that I don't think anyone really noticed, uh, so I didn't really uh, address it. But I noticed it, and it's been bothering me ever since. So I was going to address it here tonight, and it's something that happened uh, during my introduction of Dean Haskell. Now, I have the very good fortune of becoming friends with Dino, and uh, I think uh, Dino's friends will probably agree with me when I say that he is a uh, gracious provocateur. <laughs> uh, if you know Dino, you know he's got a very kind heart, but the guy likes to cause some trouble. <laughs> so, last year when I started introducing Dean, he got up from his, from his table and he started heckling me, and uh, walking onto the stage. And uh, I got a little nervous, and I started reading through uh, my, my notes as fast as I could. And, um, and when I got to his credit uh, on, about, on a book, The Alcoholic, I made an off-the-cuff joke connecting the fact that he had co-created a book called The Alcoholic with the fact that he was heckling me from down there with a drink in his hand. And uh, I think that's a pretty stupid joke. And the reason that I'm personally embarrassed about it is I was born in 1973 in New York City, and so I was a teenager in the late 80s and the early 90s. And the honest truth is, uh, me and every one of my friends have had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol since we were 15. Uh, and I should know better than to make fun of something as serious as that. Then don't apologize for it! <laughs> Just bear with me. So, interestingly enough, it was also somewhere uh, a few days before the Harvey Awards last year that I decided I needed to reboot my life in a number of different ways. Um, I woke up and I looked at myself and I realized a few things. I realized that I was not 15 years old anymore. I realized that um, my body just can't handle those nights of drinking anymore. Uh, I realized that my wife, Tracy, who was the great love of my life, She's sitting down there, she's mad cool. We should meet her later if you get a chance. But Tracy really does not like me when I'm wasted, so there's that. And I also realized that I really enjoy waking up at six in the morning, refreshed and clear-headed, and able to play, be focused enough to play a fast and furious game of Pokemon with my seven-year-old son. And I'm referring to the trading card game, not this ridiculous Pokemon. <laughs> But, but that is one of my great joys in life, is to wake up early in the morning, level-headed, before the rest of the world is awake, and spend some quality time with my son. Um, so I, I realized around about this time that I decided that I was going to quit drinking. I was just going to make a solid bit. Now, those of you who know me uh, for a while will know that before I worked in comics, uh, and before I worked in show business, I worked in the music industry. And in the music industry, there are a number of people who are alcoholics, recovering alcoholics, or people who have other um, uh, substance abuse issues. And so I've, I've spent a number of years of my life uh, loving, supporting, and otherwise dealing with people who have alcohol or other substance abuse issues. And so I had been to a number of AA meetings to support my friends. And I would walk out of these meetings really feeling pretty lucky. You know, I. I, I realized that I might have had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol, but I was not uh, somebody that suffered from the disease of alcoholism the way many of my loved ones did. Um, I did quit drinking about a year ago, um, but even today I will occasionally have a glass of wine with Tracy, and, um, and it doesn't send me down a dark path, I'm, I'm able to, to sort of handle that, and I felt very lucky for that. Um, but when I decided I wanted to quit drinking, I realized it was not easy. 
And the reason I mention AA is because I found that a, a, a great organization like AA was really no use to me. Um, and so I turned to my friends. And God bless my friends, I had the greatest friends in the world, but my friends were also no real use to me. You know, they, they all told me, uh, you, know, you think too much, you're hypersensitive, you don't have a problem, you, um, you just need to you know, stop drinking for a month, cleanse yourself out, you're gonna be fine. And my friends are usually right, but in this case, I, I was pretty sure that they were wrong. Now, at this point in the evening, you're probably wondering why I'm sharing this absurdly personal, uh, probably inappropriate story uh, at the Hardy Awards podium. Tracy is probably wondering if I've actually had too many to drink. Um, but, uh, but here it is. Um, when I found no, uh, when I couldn't find what I needed from, from great organizations like AA or from my friends, um, I did what I had done so often in my past. Uh, I turned to art. And I can honestly say, without, with 100% sincerity, that it was a 136-page graphic novel published by Romeo, co-created by Dean Haskell, called The Alcoholic, that provided me with the inspiration that I needed to make my life a better life. And I'm eternally grateful to Dean Haskell for that. Thank you, brother. I wanted to share that story in addition to, to being able to, to correct or wrong and to, to thank my man Dean, is that I wanted to really underscore the importance of this medium that we work in and that we all love, and, and the ability that we have as creators to affect change. Now, change can come, I think, in a lot of different ways. It can be heavy and personal and intense, like it was for me, of the alcoholic and changing your life without stopping drinking. Heavy, I get it. Um, but it doesn't have to be heavy. Um, change can also come through educational and enlightening means. Take a look at any of the graphic novels that are nominated tonight in the category of Best Journalistic Presentation, books that shed a light on important global, uh, political, national, or historical uh, issues. Uh, and I think change can also come through innocent and entertaining ways. Um, just take a look at any of the great work of our awards namesake, Harvey Kurtzman, the humor from Mad Magazine or the adventure stories and Two-Fisted Tales and Frontline Combat. Stories that are humor and adventure stories that are told with lots of humanism and pathos. And I think if you look at any great work in comics, the humor work or the superhero work, you will see that, that the best of those arcs and stories are, are stories that are told with a deep sense of pathos and humanism. And uh, if you look closely enough, uh, if there are also humor and adventure stories that have some little prescription how the world can be a better place. You know, with great power comes great responsibility and all that nonsense. Well, I want to suggest that it's not nonsense. We live in troubled times. You only need to look at the political situation in the UK or here at home in the US to see that people are making their decisions based on anger, fear, or a desire for change, or a need for reassurance and hope. And I believe that it's not the politicians or the nonprofit organizations, not even the, the good ones and the noble ones that are best equipped to provide these things. I believe that the best way to find inspiration for a constructive way to use your fear or a constructive place to put your anger, the best place to find reassurance in the world, and the best place, sometimes the only place, to find true hope is in art. I believe that it's the people in this room, the artists, the writers, and the creators that are the true tonic for these troubled times. And that really is why it is my great honor and privilege to be hosting the Harvey Awards, because it's an award ceremony that is for the creators. It's about the art. It's a ceremony, as you all know, uh, organized and run by creators for creators. And sure, some of the nomination process of the award-giving process isn't foolproof. But what do you expect? We're a bunch of artists. <laughs> it's not our job to create foolproof systems. It is our job to entertain and inspire. And the point of the Harvey Awards is to show us that we are doing that job in spades. 
So I, in closing, I'm here to say thank you for all the great work over the years that you have, have done and that you have enhanced my life. I will say that The Alcoholic is, is merely the most recent and certainly the most profound, but it's really just the, the most recent that a long list of comments that have changed my life for the better since I started reading comics as a teenager. I want to salute you and that all the nominees and, and the forthcoming winners for the work that you have done that we are recognizing tonight. And finally, I want to remind you of the importance of the work that you do, the value that it has beyond these conventional walls and the comic book stores. And when the celebration is over and the dust settles and we all go home from Baltimore, I hope that you will all quite literally return to the drawing board and do your best to continue to entertain and inspire and maybe, just maybe, change this troubled world for the better. Thank you.